Postgres, sometimes referred to as the Toyota Camry of databases, is one of the most popular SQL databases used by developers. But it's slow, isn't it? Shouldn't we use something fancy like MongoDB for speed? Wrong. After learning these five approaches, you'll be able to make Postgres zoom like a Bugatti. When you're working with long-running services that talk to Postgres, such as a REST API, then you're likely making the same queries over and over again. In this case, you can increase the performance of Postgres by using prepared statements, which allows you to generate queries once and reuse them with different inputs. By doing this, it reduces the need for Postgres to parse and plan your queries every time, as it reuses the initial generated statement. Creating a prepared statement is as simple as using the prepare command in SQL, followed by the name of the statement and the query. We define any input parameters we expect by using the dollar prefix on a numbered index, starting from one. With our prepared query created, we can then use the execute command to go ahead and run it, passing in any parameters we're expecting. Let's go ahead and benchmark this, shall we? Here you can see the difference between using the prepared statements versus not using them. Whilst prepared statements provide an easy performance boost, there are a couple of caveats to be aware of. The first is that a prepared statement only lasts for the duration of the current database session, which means they'll need to be recreated if the session is terminated. The second is that a single prepared statement is only scoped to that session. That means that multiple connections cannot use the same statement. Instead, each client must create its own statements. Fortunately, the popular Postgres clients for most languages will manage prepared statements under the hood, as long as you're using the correct query syntax. This means you don't have to create them manually or worry about the connection logic. Prepared statements offer the most performance improvement when it comes to long running sessions performing the same queries over and over again. However, if you have a large amount of data in your table, then prepared statements aren't going to help as much. Instead, you're going to want to use indexing. By default, whenever you run a query against a table, Postgres will look at each row to see if it matches your WHERE clause. This is known as a sequential scan. Whilst sequential scans are fine for smaller tables, as the number of rows increases, the query becomes slower and slower. The solution to this is to use indexing, which enables queries to perform well even as the table size grows. The basic idea between indexing is similar to that of a directory or a lookup table. It works by storing the associated columns in a data structure, with a reference to the applicable row IDs in the associated table. When a query is made that can be served by the index, either completely or partially, then the index is used to find rows that match that condition. To see this in action, I've loaded a table with about 20 million users, each that has an age value associated. If we search for all users that fall within the range of 21 to 35, you can see that it takes a long time to run. In fact, we can measure the time taken by using the explain analyze command before our query, which also tells us what it's doing under the hood. Notice the sec scan, which stands for sequential scan. Let's optimize this by creating an index for our age field. We first use the create index command, followed by the index name and the table we wish to create it on. We then specify the columns we want to use for our index. In this case, we're just going to use the age column. Creating an index can take a while, depending on the index complexity and the amount of data in our table. Once our index is created, we can go ahead and run the same command again. Here, it's in a fraction of the time. If we run explain analyze again, you can see it's using the index for the lookup instead of sequential scanning. Now, there are a number of caveats with indexing as well, which I'll cover in other videos. However, the major one to note is that indexing increases the time to write to a table, as any new rows also have to be added to the index and then balanced. Fortunately, there are a couple of ways to improve write performance. When you have a large database table, operations performed against it will have to run against more rows, which obviously impacts performance. If the data is able to be segmented, then a viable approach to improve performance is to use table partitioning. What partitioning does is breaks up the larger table into smaller tables, based on a column segmentation. These smaller tables are logically grouped, which allows them to operate as one single table when it comes to queries. You can partition a table based on any column that it has, for example, on the range of a timestamp or on the hash of some bytes. To create a table partition is as easy as calling our create table statement and adding the partition by keyword at the end, with the type of partition to use and the column to partition on. In our example, we're going to use a range partition on the event timestamp. Once the partition has been created, we then create the individual partition tables using the partition of command, followed by the range we wish to partition by. In our case, we're going to do it by day. We can now perform operations on our table as we would do normally. For reference, here's a couple of benchmarks for the performance improvement of partitioning. 
In this case, when sequentially reading data from the table, that only hits a single partition. And in this case, adding data to the table when it has a number of indexes. You can also run these benchmarks yourself by downloading the source code. Of course, as with anything related to database optimization, there are some caveats with partitioning as well. The first is that it can make queries slower if they have to scan a large number of multiple partitions, instead of scanning a single partition. And the second, you'll need to manage the creation of new partitions, typically with a cron job. There are some Postgres extensions which can help with this, such as pgpartman and pgcron. Overall, partitions can be a very useful technique for improving database performance. However, if you have a large amount of data to insert in bulk, there is another way to improve write performance. If you have a large amount of data to write to a table, using individual inserts can take a long time. Instead, it's possible to use the copy command, which allows you to insert a large amount of data from a file or the standard input. Postgres supports either a CSV, text, or binary format for the copy command as structured data. CSV tends to be preferable in my experience as it balances speed and compatibility. By using copy, we can increase the speed of writing data to our table by orders of magnitude. To show the speed improvement we get with copy, here we're using it to add 100,000 rows to our events table. On the left with the copy command, and on the right with a batched insert. You know the drill now, but there's a couple of caveats when using copy. The first is that if the data is malformed at any point during the copy, then the entire operation will fail. And the second is you can only really copy from the client side via STD in. Otherwise, the data file has to live on the server. Most Postgres drivers provide for this, however. Whilst copy is good for large batches of data, there is another way to increase both read and write performance, which is to actually separate the two tasks. In the majority of cases, the number of reads to a table typically outweighs the number of writes. Because of this, performance can be improved by a concept called separation of concerns where you have multiple instances of your database, each dedicated to a different task, reading or writing. With Postgres, separation of concerns can be achieved by using read replicas. This is where you have a primary database which enables writes and replica databases which are read only. The primary database will sync its data with the read replicas. This enables multiple instances to be read from, which can horizontally scale your performance. Creating a read replica is too much for this video but fortunately a lot of cloud providers do allow read replication. There's also a Docker Compose in the source code which can help get you started with it. The main caveat when using read replicas is that it does introduce additional complexity to your system and requires careful setup and monitoring to ensure that the read replicas are working correctly. There are a couple of tools such as pgbouncer or pgpool2 to help abstract some of this complexity away. With these five approaches, you can turn Postgres not only into a Bugatti, but also a Lambo or a Ferrari. We only touched on the surface of what can be achieved with these approaches, and I'll be doing more in-depth videos in the future. Until then, however, you can lower the roof and feel the wind in your hair.